It's now my pleasure to introduce the 2024 Alumni Achievement Award recipients. Throughout their careers, these distinguished graduates have contributed significantly to their companies and communities while upholding the highest standards and values in everything they do. As such, they represent the best in our alumni body, leaders who have worked hard with humility to serve humanity, exemplary role models. They inspire all those who aspire to have an impact on both business and society. I'll start by making remarks about uh, Peter uh, Crisp. MBA 1960. Curious, adventurous, and determined, Peter Crisp grew up with a fascination for flight. His parents drove him to an airstrip on Long Island, where he soloed in a single engine airplane at the age of 14. After college, that passion took Peter to the Air Force. For three years, he served as an intelligence officer, delivering classified documents around the world. As an MBA, Peter worked over the summer of 1959 at Swissair, where he read about Lawrence Rockefeller's early investments in what became Eastern Airlines and McDonnell Douglas. Intrigued, he wrote a letter to Rockefeller and was hired to clean up the files. Chris did that and much, much more. In 1969, he co-founded Venrock Associates, making early investments in Thermo Electron, Intel, and American Semiconductor. In 1979, Steve Jobs pitched Peter and his colleagues on something called a personal computer. They were sold and purchased 10% of Apple for After 45 years, Peter stepped down from Venrock, but never stopped stepping up to make the world a better place. Building on decades of board service and philanthropy, he continues to give with humble generosity, demonstrating the same commitment and curiosity that propelled him to take flight so many years ago. Please. Join me in congratulating Peter O. Crisp. John B. Hess. John, can you please join me at the podium? When he was 15 years old, John Hess worked at a Hess gas station, popping hoods, pumping gas, and washing windshields. It was a great job, he will tell you because he met so many different people. Today, as he closes in on 30 years as CEO of Hess Corporation, John will tell you he still has a great job. His father, Leon, started the company in 1933 with the purchase of a second-hand oil delivery truck. Absorbing his father's drive and incredible work ethic, John pushed back on one thing. He wanted to go to college and business school. 
at Harvard and at HBS. John learned the languages of business and economics. That education helped him guide Hess through a strategic transformation, lifting the company to new heights. John also learned Farsi and Arabic, the languages of the countries where Hess Corporation did business, building bridges of mutual trust and respect. In the same spirit, John has partnered with Mount Sinai Hospital and the government of Guyana to modernize that country's healthcare system. For John, it's a clear example of the power of business as a force for good in society, a principle he took to heart decades ago and continues to hold close in everything he does. Please join me in congratulating John B. Hess, MBA 1977. Desiree Rogers, MBA 1985. Desiree, please join me at the podium. Desiree Rogers grew up in New Orleans, balancing her schoolwork with that city's jazz and revelry, and a clear vision that her destiny lay elsewhere. She landed at HBS in the 1980s, when investment banking and consulting were booming. Desiree instead followed a strong internal compass that led her to Chicago and a job in operations. From that point, she continued to chart a path uniquely suited to her skill for making mature businesses fresh and engaging, whether it was insurance, utilities, or publishing. Desiree brought that same ability to the White House, deploying her trademark creativity, style, and joy to deliver more than 350 events during the presidency of Barack Obama. Always seeking new challenges, five years ago, Desiree purchased two storied brands, Black Opal Beauty and Fashion Fair Cosmetics. As CEO, once again she is re reinventing what an industry can be and do, building community and impact around issues like the breast cancer survival rates for black women. It's just the latest chapter in a lifetime dedicated to bringing people together to do new things that move us and move the needle on what it means to be a leader. Please join me in congratulating Desiree Rogers, MBA 1985. Gerald W. Schwartz, MBA, 1970. Gerald, please join me at the podium, please. Gerald Schwartz's father was a true entrepreneur, starting businesses in everything from auto parts to frozen food to farming equipment. As a boy in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Jerry watched his father. He also worked for him, learning to take care of customers and operate with integrity. Years later, in his first job out of Harvard Business School, the lessons his father had imparted 
help Jerry realize something. He wasn't happy. The payoff he'd received by staying at this job wasn't worth it. Unfortunately, the Wall Street offers he declined a few months ago were no longer available. Undeterred, Jerry found a way forward with a smaller firm, quickly working his way up. By 1977, he was ready to return to Canada, where he founded Canwest Capital. Then, in 1984, he launched Onex. Over the years, through numerous deals at Beatrice Foods, Sky Chefs, Celestica, and WestJet, among others, Jerry led a private equity firm based on the business building power of relationships and respect. Today, as chairman of Onyx, he continues that work and the work of the Schwartz Riesman Foundation, investing in healthcare, education, and community for the benefit of all. Please join me in congratulating Gerald W. Schwartz, MBA 1970. Our last honoree, uh, uh, Gwil E. York, MBA 1985. Gwil, can you please join me at the podium? In the 1960s, Cleveland, Ohio was a manufacturing powerhouse. Gwil York <laughs> loved it. She toured factories with her father, an analyst, learning how auto fenders and ball bearings were made. Watching people and capital come together to create things fascinated her. Then working on Wall Street, Gwil learned a bit about venture capital. She resonated with its openness and the opportunity to solve problems. In 1988, she opened the Boston office of Comdisco Ventures. In 1994, Gwil and her partners founded Lighthouse Capital Partners. Over the next 20 years, Lighthouse raised six funds, investing over $2 billion in more than 500 companies, including Netflix, NVIDIA, and Vertex Pharmaceuticals. Today, Gwil continues to invest, redeploying her leadership and strategic thinking for the benefit of private companies, as well as Boston's Museum of Science and the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. Having lost her brother to schizophrenia, she works to catalyze change in the field of mental health, serving on the boards of Alto Neuroscience and One Mind. Through these and other initiatives, Gwil is still very much the young girl who loved learning analyzing how new ideas can translate into meaningful action that enriches our relationship with one another and the world around us. Please join me in congratulating Gwil E. York, MBA 1985.